Hey guys, and welcome back to the Treehouse server. Again, this is Dr. KB1 playing some Minecraft. It is another beautiful morning here in the Minecraft world, and I thought today we would go ahead and continue with the server tour. So I'm going to go ahead, jump into the nether, and uh, take you guys out to some of the other stuff that I've been building. So let's go do it. Welcome to hell. This is the nether on the Treehouse server, and I uh, wanted to just stop here to show you guys the stark contrast between directly outside the doorway and within the doorway. I uh, really like the look of these stone bricks with the iron bars, and as you can tell, I couldn't decide between the flowing lava and the fire, so I kind of went with both in this hallway that leads down to essentially two portals. This first portal goes to the stronghold on the server, um, and at the stronghold I decided quickly that we were going to need some sort of a base of operations, somewhere we can set our spawn point and get some chests and some stuff going on in there, and just all around have a place to be when we're fighting or doing something in the end. So this is kind of what I came up with. It's got a beautiful little walkway here. It's very well lit to keep the creeps from uh, spawning on here. Got a little bit of a tree farm going on next to it. I didn't get crazy with the tree farm because as you'll see throughout the server tour, there are a lot of tree farms on this server. Uh, my buddy Kentuck Blue is a tree farm building madman. And as such, we have quite a few. But this is the cabin, um, cabin at the stronghold, however you want to call it. I just tend to call it the cabin. And I intend to uh, use the signs to kind of mark out what's in all these chests. Use this, of course, to set the spawn point. And those are more so just decorations than anything else. And that allows us to spawn there, run out, dive into this oh-so-eloquently decorated hole, and go directly into the end. So... Pretty cool stuff going on right there. Uh, I've started to expand out a little bit this way. I've made my little gazebo. Uh, I intend to make another... Oh, that's cool looking. I intend to make another area up here, another little waypoint, kind of like this, and a nice flowing bridge going right across there. Um, future plans, if you have any suggestions, let me know, but hopefully you guys will be along while I build that. So let's head back now to the nether, and uh, I will take you to see the sheep pen of epic proportions. I'll be right back. And we're back. So we're back at this first portal right outside of the entrance tunnel here. I probably should come up with some kind of a cool name for this just so I can tell people, you know, hey, go run down the lava hallway or go run down the fire tunnel or the brick oven. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. If you've got a cool name for that, I would not be against putting up a cool sign and even giving credit where credit is due. But through this door, we have a large grassy area, and I say large and I mean this small grassy area, where I intend to bring animals once the 1.4 update hits so that they can graze in here and I will have an alternative food source. And really, it's just me messing around because it's awesome that you can have grass and animals in the nether, and I'm very excited for that. So I look forward to it. Coming out of this portal, you guys are going to be just amazed at the amount of work that's been done directly behind me. Oh, wait. This is my little hidey hole, kind of where I just kept everything. The work was actually done up here. Of course, it is nighttime, but that's okay. This is what I have termed the sheep pen of epic proportions, and I hope that you guys can see just exactly how large this is and how much time and effort went into it, especially since this is a legitimate survival server, and I personally collected every bit of every resource that went into building this. My friend did help me clear the area and helped me level it and took quite a few creeper blasts while he was trying to light the area. He then logged out as I kind of started cordoning off the area, and the next time he logged in, he was just blown away that I had finished all of this in about a single, um, I don't know, probably about a 12-hour day. I did have to do a little more resource gathering as I got about, you know, an eighth of the way through it, <laughs> and uh, had to come back a couple of times, but 
this is awesome. I really love this design, which I got from Exumavoid. Uh, if I remember, I will link to his channel in the description. If I don't, please do send me a comment or an inbox message and let me know so I can add that because all the credit for this design absolutely goes to Exuma. Um, I just got the materials and built it. So basically the whole point here, if we'll mess with the pink sheep, is you turn on the water, it pushes the sheep to the front forcibly, then you can run back and forth and shear them here. The colored wool, that guy's being stubborn, the colored wool will fall into the water, fall into the collection stream, at which point you can turn off the lever and jump down and collect your bounty. So you can do that all the way around, probably just shear one side, come down and collect, and then go on to the next side. Um, I haven't really done a whole lot of collecting since I got it built. I haven't really spent a lot of time here since I spent an entire Sunday building it. But I do plan to come back and do some heavy harvesting so I have lots and lots of colored wool. And I'm hoping that some of my viewers will be able to take a look at this and give me some suggestions for what to build in the corners here, um, in the middle area, maybe some cool decoration stuff that could be done to like dome this in. Uh, I've never tried to make a dome, so that would be very, very interesting. And then as an added bonus just to this area and what kind of drew me to making this large build right here um, is the fact that this is at the convergence of four different biomes. Each corner has its own biome. So this corner over here is a desert, uh, and that extends out in that direction. This second corner here, which you can't see right now, um, but there is a spruce forest with some snow going on over there. So that's really cool as well. In this general direction, without much to look at, is plains. Um, so there are animals and everything out that way. And then in the fourth and final corner is a normal oak forest. There you can see it. And of course, when I was building this, I didn't use oak or spruce wood. I had to use birch, which does not grow anywhere near here. It might, I guess, over in this oak forest, but it doesn't grow naturally right in this general vicinity. So I did do it with the saplings and bone meal right in this middle section. So I got it as I needed it. But I'm going to head back into the nether, head over to Kentuck Blues base, the tree farm madman, and uh, kind of show off what he's built and what I've built in, in his general vicinity. So I, again, will be right back with you. All right. So the run to Kentuck Blues base is a little farther than the rest on the server. Um, he came out and did a lot of exploring early on until he found a cool village. And then we have done some work out here and messed with the houses and taken some creeper explosions and, and everything. So this has changed quite a bit from the original village that was here. Um, but he just kind of made his base around and within the village. So um, got a lot of traders here. We've gotten a lot of breeding going on and a lot of iron golems running around. And it looks like Looks like he must have had a creeper blast right at his front door. That's fantastic. I will have to ask him about that and how and why that happened and why he hasn't fixed it yet. It'd be pretty easy to hide, but he left it open knowing I was coming out here to record. So that's pretty cool. I'm not going to go real deep into his base because... I would much prefer that he get on at some point and maybe even uh, we could get a call going and he could show you and tell you about stuff for himself. Like I have no idea why this water is all moving and goofy like that. Um, but I do like these staircases that he's made. I think these are really cool using the fence posts and the half slabs and um, he's done it on both sides. It goes up over there and down over here. Um, he's got his mine entrance and his enchanting machine, which I know he's still working on. Um, so we won't go too in-depth here until he's on and got this all cleaned up to a point where he's ready to show it off. So let's go ahead and take a look out here. This, ladies and gentlemen, this is the tree farm that started it all. Uh, I called Kentuck Blue earlier a tree farm-making madman, 
and unfortunately I infected him with the madness because this was my first gift to him. Um, I don't know about my first gift to him, but this is my first gift to this base for him. Um, so I came out here and I made this quick thing and uh, the roof <laughs> was kind of unintentional. Um, I made a small sheep farm out the back, which I don't know if you can see, but uh, I had a lot of extra wool laying around and I hadn't messed with the wool dying at that point. So I made a bunch of different colored wool and ended up using it to make this awesome roof to this tree farm. But it works very, very simply. Um, you chop down the wood and you collect it. And I just took out some fence. Um, and then the leaves will degrade. The leaves will fall down into the water collection stream. And I'm not going to harvest all of this because you guys don't want to watch me chop down wood. But this all goes directly down in here, and it runs underneath the center part. And you come down here, and you can hang out with this guy while you collect your drops. It will lead you all the way down here. Yeah, not happening. So that was the first tree farm, and he really, really liked the idea of it. So he started building them elsewhere, and we will get to the tree farms that he has built around the server as we continue with the server tour. But I thought it was important to start the other members' um, tours off with this because I wanted you guys to understand where his madness for tree farms came from and um, take full responsibility for the part that I played in that. So this is kind of where he's at. He's got some more food going on over there. I haven't been all the way around this base since he's done a lot of work here. So we are going to cut out here then. Go to, I think we're going to go to SR Goss's base next. Take a look at his massive towers. And um, then we will come back and do a little more in-depth look at his base when he is on and able to uh, explain the method behind the madness is how I'm going to say that. So, I'm going to run to SR Goss's base, and I'll be right back. All right, and we have arrived at SR Goss's base, better known as the Towers. And here you guys are. Just go ahead and, and soak that up for a minute. Just the size and the scope of those massive towers. Now, please also note that those towers are both made of smooth stone. And a little factoid, that SR Goss does not have a silk touch pick. Um, he actually mined every bit of that, cooked it in a furnace to make it back into smooth stone, and then used it to build these two huge towers. So, while you guys recover from that, I'm going to go ahead and run back over here, and we will go down in and take a look at Kentuck Blue's tree farm for SR Goss. Um, I guess SR Goss was having a lot of trouble finding trees um, in this area, and so Kentuck Blue decided that he was in just desperate need of a tree farm underground. So he comes down and he clears out just a massive area here, which looks very nice, and then decides that's not enough, clears out a bunch more space, and builds SR Goss a tree farm. He put a lot of detail work into this, um, put in some colorful wheat, or um, wheat, some colorful wool behind these stairs here, put the fire all the way around, did the same over here, I'm not sure what's back there, probably just an access, and then he built this fairly small tree farm back at the very back, and uh, yeah, that's, that's his tree farm in here, this was the first one that he built I believe, on the server, and he was extremely excited for it, and I think um, he got a little carried away in his prep and decoration and didn't account for the smallness of the tree farm. But it looks really cool, and I'm sure it's perfectly functional, but um, we have since improved on the design, and um, yeah. <laughs> but let's go up here and take a, a more in-depth look at SR Goss's towers here. So I'm going to go into what he calls Tower 1, because that was the first tower that he built. 
and then we will go ahead and just cut through and I'll show you my gift to him for joining the server and starting on the towers. Um, as I said, this was all regular stone that he made into smooth stone and built this tower. Got this one pretty much finished, decided to replicate it and doubled down. So very impressive uh, the amount of work and time that he's put into doing this. And then back here, it was just an impromptu gift that I made for SR Goss as he joined. And I saw this area of water back here. This was before Tower 2 and the bridge and everything. But I saw this area and I thought it uh, needed a dock. So I built this dock, put in a couple of um, things back here. And ooh, that worked quick. with these buttons on top of the dispensers, you just have to push the button. The boat pops out and you're ready to go. So that was my contribution there, a uh, very, very small part of the huge build that is the towers. Now, Tower 1 is also interesting because it is kind of the beginning of the tunnels down here. The island under construction, I have no idea how far that one is. And these go to all sorts of different places, his underground inventory room and the treehouse and the farm and just all over the place. But we're going to go ahead and go up here so I can take you guys out on the bridge and show you the awesome view from up there. You get a uh, good view of the forest around his towers as well as a, a pretty good view of the uh, dock on the back side as well. So let's go on up here. I'm really impressed with the uh, amount of work and detail and the level of building that my friends are showing me as you know this isn't a community of professional gamers by any means um, we all went to college together and um, that's how we know each other we live in different countries um, and different states uh, at least different cities none of us live within you know 100 miles of one another so we don't get a whole lot of chances to hang out but we do get on some Minecraft and, and enjoy playing the game and uh, I'm, I've been really fortunate to be able to keep up with some of my best friends from, from college. And to be able to do it in a medium that I really enjoy, such as Minecraft, is, is just a win-win all the way around. So there's a look at the top of the dock, which looks pretty cool from here. Um, I do plan to... Oops. Whee! I do plan to mirror it on the back side of the second tower. Urgh. I just have to find time and motivation to do that first. Um, and yeah, that was the bridge that I just fell off of while I was rambling. So let's go ahead and jump out of here. And I'm going to take you guys down, show you his underground inventory room. And then because this episode is getting a little bit long, we're going to go ahead and run out to Jackson's base. And um, that will be the last one on the server tour. But first, let's finish up this one. When SR Goss was starting his towers, he needed, of course, a lot of stone, so he came down here, and this was kind of his base of operations. He had his table, his chest, and his furnaces, and he was just burning through coal, cooking cobble um, all day long. And, of course, over time, as tends to happen in Minecraft, he expanded on that and opened it up a little bit, and this is kind of his underground inventory room, and these lead to the tunnels that go to different places and I'm not sure where this one even goes but we're gonna have to get him on here so he can show us around and and lead us down some of these labyrinth passageways so that we um, can get a better idea and a little more in-depth look at his base but for our synopsis at this point I think that is sufficient so I'm gonna get out to Jackson's sky pad and I will be right back and we're at the sky pad here. Thought I would start off with a pretty view of the evening here. Unfortunately, there is uh, another player on the server now, so I can't sleep to get this to go away. But it doesn't matter much. This sky pad is lit up pretty well. So this is Jackson's sky pad. He decided very early that he wanted to do a huge um, floating base, basically. He just wanted to get high up and make a cool base that's not really connected to the ground so after the initial pillar to get up here and get started he even removed the ladder and the only way to get up here now is with the water elevator so he is officially a sky pad 
and um, I really like what's been done out here. There has been quite a bit of community builds on this, actually. Um, I'm going to start off again with Kentuck Blue's tree farm. Um, this was a collaboration between him and I. He came up with the design and actually built the area and, and got everything going. And I came in and worked with him on the redstone and on the decorations, the water falling from the ceiling. But basically, this one is just a little more efficient because, one, it has these extra water flows, which not only look badass, but they help catch drops and funnel them back into the collection stream, except for back there, which we're kind of working on and not really so worried about just those few blocks. And then, of course, once you have gotten in here and cleared out all the wood on the three lanes and you're waiting on the drops, you can come down here and actually get the dirt out of the way completely to where... There is nothing for the drops to land on, and even if some drops had landed, say you missed a couple of wood blocks, your inventory got full or something like that, um, they would go down, hit the water, come through the collection stream, and you would still end up with uh, a bunch of stuff right down in here. And so this is probably the most efficient tree farm on the server at the moment. Um, this is the one that I use on a regular basis when I need oak wood um, and uh, I really applaud Kentuck Blue for having the idea of, of having the removable dirt and the, the surrounding areas with waterfall was actually Jackson's idea and uh, I just made it work and so we're, uh, we all kind of came together and, and made a really cool tree farm out here uh, I don't know how many more are needed on the server but I do specifically remember uh, Kentuck Blue telling <laughs> Jackson that he was in desperate need of a tree farm and more so in this case than in the case of SR Goss he was correct there definitely needed to be a tree farm up here so while that was being worked on uh, this over here is going to be turned into a farm that's why I ran out here but while this tree farm was being worked on uh, I got to thinking that not only are there no trees up here there's no cobble up here either and we were burning through cobble at an alarming rate building this stuff so I decided that I needed to build a cobblestone generator oh no uh, spoiler up there so I went into a creative world and I started messing around and I wanted to try and do it with as little space usage and as little uh, materials as I could and I wanted to get as much output as possible and this is what I came up with um, this does use a little more resources than what is needed. Uh, obviously, I could have just used cobblestone, and I didn't need to use the glowstone or the glass or any of that. But it looks way too cool this way to not waste the materials on it. Um, and for some reason, I don't know what I did differently. This actually makes smooth stone instead of just cobblestone. And so if you have a silk touch pick, you can actually harvest smooth stone off of this if you're doing a project that requires it so I thought that was pretty cool as well um, and then of course from one source block of lava and just two source blocks of water we are able to keep three full stacks of or not stacks I'm sorry three full uh, rows here of stone going at any given time making it difficult to have an idle moment unless you have like a like this is a, an efficiency four pick, and that's about the only way that I can keep up and kind of knock these things down to where there's not stone to be harvested. Uh, and even then, it's it's pretty difficult to do and keep up with. So very efficient stone generator here, and a lot of the stuff that's been built since has come from this, so that uh, Jackson would stay out of our cobblestone stores, which I never thought would run low, but they absolutely did. And then while we were working on that, we realized that um, there weren't any mobs up here either. So I came out here a little ways and made a huge spawning platform up there that has water flows in the middle, much like the one that's at the top of the treehouse, except due to the lack of spawnable area around here, this has rates that are just much, much greater. Um, they're just now spawning because the sun is coming up, so it's not running at full capacity yet, but it absolutely runs very quickly most of the time. And that is the sky pad at the moment. Um, there is a big open room 
that is below this little shack here it's in the middle but there's not really anything down there it's just kind of an open room um, Jackson hasn't really been doing a whole lot on here recently um, but we did do a server event recently that I will try and get some video up of soon and um, you guys will see what we've been kind of prepping for. Home sweet home. I always enjoy coming back to the treehouse after having been out and about at everybody else's bases for a while. My base isn't the prettiest, it isn't even the most functional, but it's been here the longest and I spent an, a lot of time building it and working out of it. I'm going to be kind of sad if I do end up moving out to the cabin, but uh, as you guys saw, that's a much more aesthetically pleasing place with a lot more area to kind of expand around. Let me know in the comments if you guys think that I should just keep building at the treehouse or if I should expand out and leave this as kind of a community area or um, maybe do something completely different. Maybe suggest a biome that I should be looking for or something you would like to see built. Um, but as always, please do rate, comment, subscribe, leave me some love down in the comments, and uh, let me know if you guys want to keep seeing this content, and hopefully episode 3 will be out shortly, along with uh, another couple of videos of, of some events that have taken place on the server recently. Uh, I look forward to it, guys. Thanks again for watching, and uh, see you next time.